You know what? Let's bring in somebody who knows what they're talking about. A former NFL offensive lineman, won a Super Bowl with Washington. A Harvard-trained orthopedic, Dr. Mark Addix. And uh, good to have you back on here, Doc. So do you want us to tell you what we think turf toe is? And then you could uh, probably correct us on this. That'd be great. Let's see what you guys got. Let's uh, see how good you are. Uh, all right, I'm going to start with you, Paulie. What do you think turf uh, toe is? Uh, like a, a ligament sprain in the toe that hampers an athlete from pushing off, like sprinting, like running. All right, Fritzy, you got a definition for uh, turf toe. Uh, one's toe is so severely sprained from the pounding on the turf that it does something where it kind of disconnects the toe from the other toes and needs to uh, be surgically fixed or snapped back into place. All right, Seaton? It is an injury that when, uh, say, like wide receivers are going to get their second foot in and they drag it along the turf. Oh, that's turf, turf toe. Oh, their toe oh, is on oh, the turf and oh. then it gets hurt like that. Okay. That's turf toe. Okay. Oh, I did not, I did not uh, yep. look at it that way. Yes, McLean. So I thought it was a rug burn style injury for many times. Because those are the worst when you're playing with your kids, a rug burn. Mm. But I do believe okay. it's a, now a ligament underneath ligament. your toe that connects to the foot. Okay, let's, let's bring in Doc. And uh, Doc, what exactly is turf toe? Well, I think, I think uh, example one wins the ligament injury. So it can be a ligament injury or it can be an injury to the plantar plate, which is almost like a cartilage thing that's on the bottom of the toe. It is the big toe joint. And it rarely is an injury that requires surgery. Uh, the vast majority of players don't require surgery. In the NFL, there have been about, there was a study that was done that had about 30 guys with turf toe injuries that were pretty severe and only about 10% ended up requiring some surgery. Deion Sanders did require surgery. Deion Sanders' turf toe injury did end his career, essentially. He, he stuck around for a couple more years, but, but never really was the same. Antonio Gates had, a, had a, a pretty bad turf toe, had surgery in 2008 and played many years, was very productive after that injury and surgery. So generally speaking, guys do okay. I think Deion was... Uh, as his foot would attest, was was an extreme case. Did Mahomes play the Super Bowl with a torn ligament? Yeah, certainly he did. I mean, I, I, in other words, when you have a, a turf toe injury, there are three grades, grade one, grade two, grade three. It's the same for almost anything. Grade one, just a few of the fibers are torn. Grade two, a bunch more are torn. Grade three, it's completely disrupted. So for someone to need surgery, generally there's got to be a little bone chip that's in the joint or the toe has to be somewhat unstable, which would tell you that that ligament tear had to be pretty significant. What's the normal timeline for recovery? So, I mean, the normal timeline for a guy who, who does not require surgery, generally about eight weeks. So it's not short, even for guys that don't require surgery. When you do require surgery, it's, it's generally a four month recovery. Uh, can go out to six months. Four months would make it easy for him to be back for camp. If it was six months, it could it could eat into the start of the season here. If it wasn't the Super Bowl, do you think he would have been playing? I do. I do. I mean, I think Patrick Mahomes is one of those guys who cares so much about the team and his teammates that I think that if he felt that he could help the team, he would be on the field. But does this last, though, his Mark? Performance would hurt. Do, is this, is this going to be something that can last? Like, is could he have done – irreparable harm to this? Certainly, you can worsen an injury. You can make the ligament tear worse. You can do more damage to the joint. So is it possible that he, pl him playing in the AFC Championship and the Super Bowl damaged his joint further? Yes, that is possible. Do I think a well-done surgery should allow him to return to the field and be effective? I, I expect that. I think that that's how this is going to play out. But I wonder uh, if there's more damage there than just turf toe, if it's the plate itself, if, if that's involved in it, not to get too deep into the woods here, but how much more recovery time, how much more uh, 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 severe is this injury? Well, sometimes you completely disrupt that plantar plate. Sometimes you break the sesamoid bones. There are two little bones that sit under that joint as well. Sometimes you damage the joint. And there's a little bone chip in the joint. So there are a number of things that can complicate this, but all of them shouldn't make his recovery extend out beyond six months. We're finding out Dak Prescott had a second surgery. Compound fracture and a dislocation here. 
how like is that n- normal and how does that affect him long term it's not normal um you wonder I mean, you know, without knowing exactly what the surgery that was done i mean sometimes they go in to remove some of the hardware some of the hardware is symptomatic sometimes you go in because people are so stiff that they require a procedure to get rid of some of the scar tissue so that you can have more normal motion. And sometimes after a big fracture dislocation like that, you have to go in later to maybe remove a little bone chip or something that's irritating the joint. So all of those things are not good news, but um, I think he should be able to return and play, play well as a quarterback. You know, I mean, if you, if he's a running back or wide receiver, you know, a defensive back, I mean, it's, it's a much bigger deal um, even though he is a, a somewhat mobile quarterback, I, I think that he should be able to return and be 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 the old Dak Prescott. How much progress have we made on Achilles tears? Um, there are more minimally invasive procedures that are out there now that I think are pretty darn effective. I think that the rehab has become um, appropriately aggressive. And so I think folks do better now with Achilles ruptures than they did a decade ago. And I think some of it's due to the the more minimally invasive surgery and some of it's due to the, to the more aggressive rehab. Uh, I'm going to open this up to the Danettes. Do you guys have a, a sports related question injury wise for uh, Dr. Addicts here? Because I, I had the micro fracture surgery of my knee and uh, it didn't work, but I had six operations. I eventually got a, a replacement knee. Are they still doing microfracture surgery where they take the drill and go whip it into your knee? <laughs> um, it's much more rarely done. It is sort of a last ditch effort in a younger patient to try to get some new cartilage to grow. Just so you know, I uh, in the exact same boat. I had microfracture, a few more surgeries, and I have a total knee too. Uh, so um, yeah, so the, the end result. Yeah, I was never, result after microfracture. Uh, yeah, my career was never the same after that. Uh, do, <laughs> do you guys have th- this is free medical advice? So if you want to take uh, Doc up on this, if you got a question here, McLovin, do you have a question for okay, Doc? I'll start. So I have a hip impingement, Doc. Uh, am I making it worse by running? Uh, I jog. Am I making it worse? And will I eventually need a hip replacement because I have a hip impingement in my right hip? All right. All right. So I am 59 years old. I haven't weighed less than 300 pounds in forever. Both my hips, I have impingement. I mean, I avoid positions uh, that cause me pain, right? Most men have FAI or femoroacetabular impingement, and it does not necessarily mean that you're going to need a joint replacement. Now, I mean, as we age, sometimes we have to change what we do and maybe need to go from running to a bike or running to an elliptical or you know, change it up a little bit, cross train a little bit, but no, I wouldn't tell you to necessarily go and have a hip scope to have that impingement removed. Cause who knows if that will actually make you better. You could end up like Dan here and have four more surgeries and then a, a uh, hip replacement. Seton O'Connor. About four years ago when the Super Bowl was in Houston, we went and shot a bit where uh, all of us were, went to a spin class. And it was funny because we were all out of shape or well, most of us were out of shape. Okay. I was out of shape. And while we were doing that, when we were done sometime later that night, my right knee exploded and was like four times the size it normally is. And I couldn't walk right for about two or three weeks. And now every time that I go do something, whether it's running or like play soccer with my kid or something, uh, my knee swells up again. Do you think there's something wrong there? <laughs> we're, so you were, you were uh, obviously, I think you tried too hard in that, that, that spin class. Um, so you were up and you were up and out of the saddle and you know really really grinding oh, hard yeah. and going after it. Did you win? Did you win out of out of all the Danettes? Were you the winner? I sure was not. No, he was not. No. Oh, he, he, God. Did, do you think he needs uh, surgery? Do you think there's <laughs> MRI? Well, all right. So when that happens, it's usually you're grinding some of the cartilage off the ends of your bone. Little pieces of cartilage flake off. The the joint gets irritated and swells up. And so now when you're running around playing with the kids. This continues to happen. So, I mean, an MRI would show you whether this was a meniscus tear or more cartilage injury. Um, very often, we have these injections. I call them an oil change. It's hyaluronic acid, and it's uh, it's like an oil change for the joint. And sometimes that can uh, help protect the cartilage and calm the joint down. Uh, but uh, it sounds like you're uh, you got some wear and tear in there for sure. Uh, Paulie, 
uh, Dr. Addicts, I was uh, throwing some weight around last year in the uh, weight mm. room, and like my elbow where the joint is, if I put my arm straight out, it's the top, like the ligament or whatever it is at the top of the joint, and to hold stuff like in your hand, it hurts a lot. And rest, ice, all that stuff didn't help whatsoever. What are your thoughts? Sounds like tennis elbow. Um, if you if you stand up and grab a chair and try to pick up a chair by the back of a chair, how's that feel? Horrendous, awful. Okay, yeah, it's tennis elbow. So the the medical term is lateral epicondylitis. Go to your orthopedic surgeon. Let them give you a cortisone injection. You'll be cured. And uh, we'll save the worst for last. Todd. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of problems. <laughs> the uh, the bottoms of my feet. I went to a podiatrist recently, but I want to hear what you have to say. Right before, right under the toes, I feel like I'm walking on a bump, or like there's a sock stuffed in my shoe, and I'm not sure what's going on. He suggested eventually I may need physical therapy or needles. But what is this bump across? right under my toes where it feels like I'm walking on like a little mini pitcher's mound. You know, I mean, usually that's metatarsalgia. So the, the better question is, do you feel worse barefoot or do you feel worse with shoes on? I feel worse with shoes on. And he sold me these, uh, you know, little insoles to put in and it, and it told me to ice my feet, which it hasn't uh, worked uh, just yet. So I'm trying to figure out to avoid needles what, uh, All right, what I do so about that. If it feels... If it feels worse with shoes on, then that usually means you have an aroma. So that when the bones are pressed together by a shoe, it's it's irritating a nerve and that nerve grows and makes a little, you know, it gets a little swollen. So those neuromas, usually they give you a metatarsal pad and then so that spreads the toes apart. And sometimes they can do an injection to shrink that nerve. And the uh, worst case scenario, they can do a surgery and actually go in and remove that nerve so it doesn't feel like that anymore. Would you be willing to do a surgery here in the man cave on one of the Dan Ed stock? You know, I, I think we could pull that off, uh, you know, with some local anesthetic and a bullet to bite on. I think, I think we could pull that off. Do you realize that one of my, when I got the microfracture knee surgery, my doctor said, do you want to watch me do it? And he was going to give me a local <laughs> and I could watch in the monitor. And I said, are you crazy? And he said, well, a lot of people don't want to be put under because of the anesthesia. And then you get nauseous when you wake up. He said, this is just a local, and you could watch me send a drill bit through your knee. Do you do this? <laughs> do, you, do you allow people to stay awake? I, I don't. I don't. Uh, you know, I actually did stay awake for one of my surgeries when I was a resident, and I was actually training to be an orthopedic surgeon. I watched one of mine. But with my patients, I just think it, it, I did it a few times, and I had patients that basically never quit talking the entire case. And it was a distraction. And so I, I, I just put them to sleep now. Why is every surgery a successful surgery on an athlete? Um, I call it the beautiful baby syndrome. You know, I mean, we, we do a surgery and that's our baby. You know, no one's going to say their baby's ugly. <laughs> but everybody's surgery is a successful surgery, it feels like. Yeah, it's the, it's the, yeah we should have our hands bronzed after every case. And do you make your uh, patients put like, uh, this is the knee that you're going to operate on? Like I had to take a Sharpie and I had to actually write my initials on it just so they asked me like six times, uh, are we doing your left knee? Yeah. Yes. And then I go, God, these guys are incompetent. They don't know what knee that they're doing. <laughs> they wanted me legally to keep saying, no, it's my left knee. All right, here's a Sharpie. We want you to write your initials on the knee that we're going to cut on. Is that normal? No, every. Every case, the patient and the surgeon have to write with a Sharpie on the knee. And you're going to be asked by every single nurse and every anesthesiologist. I mean, it's the worst case scenario, right? I mean, if you operate on the wrong extremity, you know, it's write him a check. Did, did you <laughs> ever no, do there's no defense? Did you ever do that? <laughs> near, did you ever near, yeah, yeah, like I admit that to you. Yeah, I know. No, no, I know. <laughs> hey Doc, always great to talk to you. We appreciate your time and hope you're well. You bet. Thanks for having me on, Dan. That's, Thanks, uh, guys. Dr. Mark Addicts, a uh, former Super Bowl champ with Washington. Uh